From 1795, England was almost continuously at war with the French Emperor Napoleon. Final victory over Napoleon was achieved only in 1815, when Wellington triumphed at Waterloo. Professor Sam smiles. What Turner does is demonstrate that landscape can absorb history rather than the other way around. And it wasn't simply the history painting that the Academy would have preferred, but he also found a way of talking about contemporary history, Napoleon particularly, as a way of showing that landscape really was the only place to talk about history seriously. The field of Waterloo, where he shows the aftermath of the battle with rockets being fired to illuminate the battlefield and to deter looters, and women searching for their loved ones in, in a heap of corpses, mingling British and, and French troops, all, of course, united in death. The contrast between the burning buildings on the right and the rockets going up in the background and the night sky and the candles the women are carrying is very much meant to remind you of Rembrandt. So what he's doing is he's taking a moment of contemporary carnage, and Waterloo was only a, a couple of years in the past when this picture is painted, and then finding a way of talking about it that goes beyond a kind of Grand Guignol fascination with death and destruction, and pushes it up that level so that the same kind of poignant reaction we might have to a scene of the crucifixion or the blinding of Samson is applied to these ordinary troopers who have died as a result of one man's ambitions and the huge loss of life that it occasioned. Throughout the early years of the war with Napoleon, England prepared to defend itself against invasion. Barry Venning. The way in which the war affected artists is an enormously complex subject. If you're a landscape painter, it had one really significant effect in that it stopped you traveling in search of European subjects. From 1793, when he was 18 years old, to the Battle of Waterloo in 1815, when he was just 40, for all of his youth and his early middle age, England was at war with France, and that meant that, with the exception of a very brief 18-month peace treaty in 1802, British artists were confined to Britain. 